So, welcoming you to our exhibition where we are, and we're going to take a look around at 13 of our folks, our work studio and artists, and hear a little bit about their practice. Yeah, so, maybe straight into the microphone. How does this sound? Here we go. Nice and clear. So, we can talk about Jane's work, the vibrant, pulsating. Layers of soft lines created by this open. The three shapes that Jane uses to celebrate them. Okay. Let me just see whether this works better. Testing, 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 testing. Much better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Neither. Yeah. The road mic. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Testing, testing. Okay. Stand about here, and how is the sound? Just checking the sound. It's 201. Okay. Cool. And everything's okay for you, Leanne? You can hear us well? 50-50. Testing. Audio quality is all good now. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you hear me too, Leanne, from here? Oh, if I stand back a bit.
Hello, this is Liam Benson and I'm here at Blacktown Arts in the exhibition We Are, which is the debut exhibition from We Are Studios. Uh, I am a Western Sydney based artist. I'm also the creative director at We Are Studios and I'm the curator for this exhibition. With me today is Ebony Whiteman and Jordan Bellagiorgio, who are the co-founders of We Are Studios. Jordan is the chairperson of the board and Ebony is also on the board as the treasurer. Ebony is also one of the artists in this exhibition. We'd like to acknowledge that we are joining you from Darug land today. And we recognise that this is unceded lands. We'd like to pay our respects to Darug elders of the past and the present and those emerging who have continued to carry Darug culture so that it exists here today. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. So we're going to take you around this exhibition and visit each of the works by 13 artists from We Are Studios. We have, we're not only exhibiting here at Black Town Arts, but we also created the work here at the workshop space and the other spaces here at Black Town Arts. It was a complete takeover of the Arts Centre uh, over the 10 weeks leading up to the exhibition. And I have to say also during our time here whilst we've been exhibiting. We met twice a week and uh, worked with Linda Brescher, who's another Western Sydney based artist, uh, along with some volunteers as well to work on the theme of We Are, design the artworks and then create them here in this space, finesse them and prepare them for exhibition. It was a exciting and very involved process and the artists, they brought their existing artist practice to these workshops and have expanded on their practices with new and exciting work. They also worked collaboratively throughout this process and this is something that has come naturally to our artists because many of them have known each other for years and have been practicing together in uh, other studio programs and also socially and in other parts of society. So some of the artists even know each other outside of their artist practice. So you'll even see that different people feature in each other's works and that this collaborative process has also really nurtured the progression and the new and innovative, exciting things that um, the artists have achieved within their work. I might hand over to Ebony, uh, who might have a little bit of personal insight into those uh, 10 weeks of doing workshops here at Blacktown Arts. Hi everybody, I'm Ebony. Um, I'm one of the artists, like Liam just said, and one of the co-founders of We Are Studios. Really happy to have you all here today. I'm a country girl myself from Armadale, New South Wales. So making sure that we have accessible ways for people who aren't living in and around the metropolitan cities and people with disability who are at home, who are unable to get out and about as um, everyone who is able to do, can do. And we thought it was really important to make this uh, accessible for you guys here today. So I'll also introduce our lovely Auslan speaker who is interpreting today, Leanne. And she's a wonderful um, interpreter and will be guiding us today. And if you have any issues, Maybe um, Leanne, you can help us uh, mitigate that happening. Um, but yeah, I'm so pleased to have you here today. Uh, this experience has been wonderful. Like Liam just said, it's been 10 weeks and we managed to do all of this work in a lot, a really um, you know, short time frame. We got a lot done. 
So I'm being told to speak slower. <laughs> I'm autistic, um, so it's a, it's a struggle for me. I will do my best, um, but we'll get there. Every, every day is a school day. Um, so yeah, the experience was wonderful. Um, working in Blacktown Arts, we actually took over all of the spaces. Whether or not we were allowed to do so, we were there. <laughs> Um, we had artists on the balcony, in the car park, spray painting. We had artists taking over the performance space, doing live works and video works as well. So this collaborative experience has been immense and uh, a really wonderful um, time. So yeah, that's for me. Back to you, Liam. Thank you. Thank you. Um, a little bit about We Are Studio. We are a, an arts program that supports artists with disability who live, work and play or have a connection to Western Sydney. Our programs cover all aspects of what it takes to nurture an artist. So, and we, and we welcome artists of all different levels within their practice and have programs that support whatever it is that the artists want to achieve within their work. We are 100% disability led. All of our board are artists and people with disability. And so what we do here at We Are Studios is completely led and created and devised by the community that it supports. And our facilitators and everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's so exciting thinking about what this 10 weeks captured. Uh, as Ebony said, we utilised all the different parts of Black Town Arts and it was an amazing collaborative experience with Black Town Arts. It was also bringing all of these different practices together, from performance to painting, people with immaculate skill with the paintbrush, to people who have uh, interesting and innovative ways of working with recycled materials. So. Mia Tito Barrett led workshops that were part of our process in the performance space that led towards um, artworks like Rebecca Shiroli's um, performative drawings and then also Mia's collaborative work. Some of the other works as well conceptually had grown uh, through the creative process. So being in the workshop space here at Black Tun Arts allowed the artists to share ideas and expand on the themes and the stories within their work and take it to new levels. Another thing, you know, like the artists were expanding on their practice and really creating new, bold, exciting works. And for some of those artists, it was literally scale. It was taking their work to a whole new size and ambitious scale as well. So we'll see some really large and bold work in this exhibition, as well as some really intimate, beautiful, detailed work that holds layered narratives that relate to the artists and their relationships. We might turn around and have a look at our first work by Jane Thatcher. Jane has an almost ritualistic process with her art making. The shapes that you're seeing in this work and the way that these, they've been painted with um, repeated lines in different colours is something that Jane does every day. She meditatively draws and paints these shapes as a way to, I guess, really immerse herself in her work in, in a very mindful way. And they're directly related as well to notions of mindfulness and meditation. The triangles are yoga. The circles are the moon. And these large rectangles are a door. And these motives hold great significance for Jane. And it's beautiful to watch her create these works and select the colours, these vibrant, broad spectrum 
of, of tones that come together. But for this, Jane, we, we talked about it, we've been on gallery tours, we've been looking at work at different scale and different styles and different mediums, and spray painting came into the discussion. So we kit up Jane in all the protective gear and took out the entire car park with a, a, a spray painting booth and setup that um, Jane could take her intricate composition that she'd created using all of her beautiful different shapes and then taking it to this new scale. And instead of drawing within the space of her lap, taking it to these large embodied movements. So not only have we now got this huge work with these beautiful soft and hard lines, but also the process of actually working with the new medium and interpreting these shapes was really interesting. Creating these gorgeous drips and these splatterings and different soft tones. So this experimental process of playing with scale ended up having so many more layers to it for Jane. It was really fun and it was really new. And do you want to tell them about the artist statement, Liam? Mm. So I'll tell you. Mm. Jane actually um, speaks with few words, so we didn't want her to have to write her own artist statement. So what we actually did was Jane made herself a video artist statement, which can be seen on our Instagram and YouTube. And it really gives you a fantastic look at what Jane's process was in making this art and the themes that she was talking about. Now, Liam, can I just get you to stand in front of the work again? Yeah. I just want to show everyone the kind of scale. Yeah. And is there any particular pieces that, or spots that are your favourite from Jane's work? I love this vibrant, hot red, which is almost like a progressive orange, and the way that it is almost, um, like it's like this tight, this splattering um, galaxy-like uh, pattern over this lime green. I love the colours that Jane chose and how they play off in really exciting ways. And then I also love these groups here. So for Jane and the people that were working with her, you know, the work was suspended within the um, uh, tent area, and then it was also brought down onto a table. And so the painting was moving and morphing to whatever was working best for Jane at the time, and which allowed for the paint also to respond to the kinesthetic kind of performative way that this artwork was coming together. My favourite part about it is that this morning Jane was talking about how she likes to meditate and she said in her artist statement that she was able to go somewhere else with this work, that meditation allows her to to go to a different space, a more comforting space, and to be present there. And the fact that this piece is a doorway, I think is really lovely and can speak to that. And I think as many people with disability will have felt that at some point of their life. Um, and yeah, I think that's just really lovely. Let's go take a look at Taylor's work. So Taylor's work is one of the first pieces you come to as you enter the exhibition. Um, and it's called Cherish the Memories. On the front here, we have a design that is reminiscent of Taylor's work. She loves to paint vibrant flowers, um, often flowers that are, are given to her as a gift. Uh, and Taylor also makes cards uh, regularly for loved ones. So this is a giant card featuring flowers and it really highlights the kind of intimate relationships that, that Taylor has with her family and friends and these, these ways of expressing that love. This flower composition was created in collaboration with her fellow artists. 
She went around to everyone and asked what their birthday was, and then researched the birth flower for each person, and then put it into this composition. On the inside of the card is a poem made up of sentiments from her fellow artists as well. She asked them, what would you write in a card that you were writing to your fellow artists and community? And so putting it together almost like a concrete poem, we have this beautiful sentiment of devotion. I'll read a little bit of it out. Thinking of you, I miss you, my friend. Never strive to overwork too hard. I hope everyone has a great time at the exhibition. Best wishes for very good art. And then down the bottom, we have it continues. Thank you for giving me something to live for, something to look forward to, and something to cherish. That if was my piece. <laughs> <laughs> if artists were flowers, I'd pick you always and forever. Yeah, that piece was from Taylor herself. Yeah, yeah. So it's a very heartfelt message uh, that, that, yeah, I think really we, we, we put this at the beginning of the exhibition because it sets the tone of the depth of relationship that the artists have with one another and that collaborating isn't just about being artists sharing creative practice. It's because they're friends, you know, they're people who inherently understand one another and form a community that is a safe space for one another. Um, Ebony, I'll get you to maybe talk to the next work. Yeah, which one? Uh, where would you like to go? I guess we can do my bed. Yeah. Um, so this is my piece, Comfort. And this bed represents actually a time in my life that was really difficult. Um, I spent probably a year and a half in solitude in bed um, a few years ago after a really bad depressive state, um, after some chronic health conditions and lots of stuff going on. But I thought at that time in that bed that that was all that I was ever going to see. I thought that I would live and die in that bed and those four walls would be it for me. Um, I actually, I can say, I probably didn't have a single friend at the time. And being someone with chronic illness and disability, that's something a lot of us go through. Friends come and go, um, and when you're somebody who needs specifically people to come and see you, that can often be really difficult. So. The name of this work is actually called Comfort. And comfort is a multifaceted word. Of course, this is a bed, so it's a comfortable space. It's very cushiony and cloud-like. But it's also something you do to somebody who is in need, who needs support. You comfort them when they're down. So gallery spaces in general, people spend about seven seconds in front of the average piece of work. So I really wanted to create this as a platform as well to view all the other works that we have here today um, in a comfortable way. Um, you know, I was saying, you know, gallery spaces, arts and cultural institutions don't have enough chairs, so why not bring in a bed? Um, and it's been really good to see the way that people have engaged with the bed. You're allowed to come in, you're allowed to lie on it, to get cosy, to stay as long as you want until they kick you out. Um, and it's also, I think of it as a portal as well. Um, for me, when I was in that space, when I was in that bed, and I thought that was it, I think about all of the other people who were currently in that space who something like this, they might never think was possible. But with support systems um, and help and guidance from our arts community and places like the wonderful Blacktown Arts Centre, I was able to make this work. And I think there's so many people out there in bed, you know, in hospital or confined, I guess, in their space 
who are capable of all of this kind of work if they just have the support systems available to do so. Um, part of this engagement has been actually on the bed itself right now, there's a few different portraits, but at the beginning, the bed didn't have those because I think beds are places where dreams can happen, but also nightmares. And for me, the calico represented more of a padded cell. So when it was all white, it was really about compliance. But I've been inviting artists with disability to come and draw a self-portrait onto the bed from in the bed. So it's really about engagement and being supported um, in the gallery in an inclusive way. Now, these pillows are an additional um, interactive piece that we've been doing. We can pan over to the cushions. Mm -hmm. And these are all have been lovingly hand sewed together by Ebony, <laughs> made up of different portraits that people have drawn of themselves. Um, this one is actually my favourite one. Sorry, everybody. But this is from one of our artist's daughters, um, Xanthi and Lila. And it's just the cutest little piece. And they're actually on the bed themselves. Um, so I think this is a wonderful and I've had a lot more that I have to actually do right at home right now. So I probably should be getting back to that, but back <laughs> to you, Liam. We'll take a look at Emmanuel's work next. Um, and with the microphone, you just have to stand a little bit away from it. Okay. Because otherwise it's quite loud. Um, these works are called Transpire and Inspire by Emmanuel Sanze. And I'll get you to come a little bit close and take a look at the warm, beautiful tones of this work. It's actually painted using coffee. And coffee is important to Emmanuel as a material for multiple reasons. Emmanuel's family are from Ghana. And so African culture is embedded within this work. And also that coffee is something that Emmanuel associates with Africa. Also, as a medium, it is incredibly accessible. It's uh, an innovative medium. It's, you know, it's, it's something that we all usually have in our home. Um, it's very affordable. And the way that Emmanuel works with it, he gets these incredible, beautiful tones um, and gorgeous warmth within the way that he's layered this material. It's, you can't smell it now that it's dry, but it's quite beautiful being near Emmanuel whilst he's painting because of the lovely smell of the coffee. Transpire features different animals all together within an environment, um, in a, a quite a wild environment, um, a forest or a jungle, or the bush and it has large animals from the elephant to a highland cow, the lion, peacock, but also small domestic animals as well like this little puppy and the kitten down below and all of these animals again came out of conversation with his fellow artists through the workshop series. Emmanuel asked everyone what animal do you feel closely resembles who you are as a person? Like, who would you, what would you be as an animal? And so then he lovingly painted them all into this environment together, very peaceful. Um, and then this work here features a manual as well as his sister. So this work is very much about the exchange um, within an artist practice that is, comes from, you know, a depth of relationships. So his sister, Emmanuel says, is someone that has supported him right from the beginning and has been someone who has consistently nurtured him and encouraged him. It's hard being an artist, you know, especially maybe if you're the first artist in the family. So having someone that believes in you is really, really nurturing. So it's a lovely homage to his sister and his relationship, also to his fellow artists. Let's swing around here and take, we'll go from <laughs> this beautiful detailed 
lovingly painted work to this bold, immersive, concentric, circular, patterned piece. And how and big is this piece, Liam? This is three meters by, let's say, two point seven meters. You know, this is the biggest artwork that Grazia has ever painted, and she's titled it that as well. The so, biggest artwork in the world. <laughs> Grazia is you know, an avid painter. She um, loves working with beautiful tones and colour. But mostly in the past, she has worked with uh, you know, smaller paintings that talk about her domestic life. You know, things like the kitchen sink or her kitchen table her bed or, you know, her dresser. Things that talked about you know, her domestic life, which is where Grazia has spent a lot of time. But coming into an arts program like this, becoming part of Weo Studios, Grazia is now probably one of the most socially engaged people that we know. She is um, here at almost every single one of our programs. She's been here at the um, exhibition so much, and she'll be the first person to come over to you and say, come and see my work. Come and take a look. Inside each ring of this painting are different symbols that, again, she's workshop with her fellow artists, you know, in like brainstorming these ideas. What else am I going to put into my work? So people came up with these beautiful different symbols and motives for Grazia to practice and, and create. But they're also about each person that she's got a relationship with. The outer ring has been in bracelets which are a reference to Robin Kemp's work that she has in the exhibition. This lovely cloud-like design here is actually Ebony's beautiful curly hair. <laughs> so there's some really playful symbols in there. The cats are a really reference to all the people who have cats and have these beautiful, loving relationships. Um, you know, if you're a cat person, you're probably pretty obsessed with your cat. So she created this wonderful part that talks about a love of our pets. I like this one with the monobrow. <laughs> we have gelato, and these are paintbrushes and music. So they talk to all the different interests and the personality traits within the We Are Studios community. Here as well, we have pizza boxes that interestingly enough look like chairs around the table and it has stamped GM, Grazia Napolitano. So that would be her pizza brand if she were to have one. One day. One day. Grazia will have everything. <laughs> Grazia in her artist statement as well has a wonderful quote. She says, I'm a little woman, but I make the biggest artworks. And I do it one hand. Yeah. <laughs> This was a really interesting time for Grazia as well. So not only is this work about the people that she's connected to, but also this was the first time that Grazia ever allowed other people to come in and work with her collaboratively. Grazia, she's very proud. She's a very prolific artist and she likes to have, you know, creative control over her work. But slowly but surely over this 10 week process, she embraced the idea of allowing other people to come in and collaborate on this work to paint it. And but all the time, it was wonderful watching Grazia direct this. And really, I would say Grazia still painted at least 50% of this work. The double cone. Oh, yeah. And then there are some little secret hidden details, like here, the double cone, that she had in dedication to... Adrian. Yeah. Shout out to Adrian. Proud. <laughs> the best Grazia helper. And wonderful artist. Wonderful artist. It's so beautiful. Let's go around the corner, we'll take a look at Joseph Barada's work. Do you want me to talk about this or would you like to talk? Yeah. So this is the story of Noema. And we have four paintings here featuring a character that Joseph has created himself. And Noema, this represents the four different stages of Noema's kind of like character arc. So it's... Um, Ego, rage, redemption, and bliss. And bliss. So it's really like it's really lovely that we've got these these warm, 
loving works in the exhibition that, that are about um, very positive themes and um, in, in people's lives. And then we also have works like Joseph's that talks about the different emotional states and the kind of challenges that we, we, we face as people growing up. And Joseph reflects on these works, in, even saying that, you know, I, I, I feel, I see this character in some of my times um, as a teen growing up. You know, the stage of ego being about wanting to be popular, as many of us do in the early stages of like high school and primary school. And then the kind of changes that we go through as we actually find out who we are ask questions about our identity and spend time working through it socially. Eventually, and maybe even having some really intense emotions like rage as we have to process and face who we really are, which eventually leads to this kind of redemption. And then Joseph has also elaborated on these paintings with these four works on paper, which are like graphic novels that elaborate on Noema's story. Now, what I really like about this work is that there is a narrative quality to it, but it's not completely lineal. That there are ebbs and flows within the stories of these graphic uh, depictions of Noema and her friend who has, um, who, who's a wolf. And there are some ebbs and flows, some going from moments of calm and connection to conflict and resolution. I just, I love the way that he pops in a little bit of colour here and there, again, to really highlight the intensity of those emotions. Over here we have Maria Macabentis' work, Magic Flowers. This motif is um, a flower design that Maria has been working on for some time and has brought into her work to talk about things that she can't quite explain with words. Experiences that range from the spiritual to the emotional. The colours are beautiful. <laughs> they talk to one another and they're so harmonious. And I love the way that Maria maps out her colours as she paints these, these gorgeous flower motifs. And the reason why they're also called magic flowers is because Maria, as someone who struggles with mental health at times, she often needs something beautiful and uplifting, and that's what she seeks through her art, something that is healing for her. And that's why they're called magic, because for her, these flowers are healing. Yeah, let's have we had a close look at those. I love the poetry of the different names of the colours from turquoise to cornflower blue, peach, turquoise. And this it's is very a evocative. hybrid Maria flower. It's not any particular flower. Hmm. I guess it's a magic flower. Yeah, magic flower. <laughs> I'll hand over to Ebony to talk about M Mia Tito Barrett's work. So Mia is one of our board members as well, and Mia is a brilliant artist, and as well a fellow autistic person. New diversity. <laughs> so actually, one of the... 10 weeks that we spent here at Blacktown Arts, Mia facilitated a workshop where she made our costume dreams happen. She asked all of the participants, all of the artists in our group, if they could have a costume, what would it look like? And we spent about an hour designing a costume. Now, this piece is significant because um, this one was made for Rebecca, Rebecca Soroli. And Rebecca is somebody who is living with a brain injury. And prior to her um, brain injury, she actually did a lot of corsetry work. But of course, corsetry work requires a lot of um, like two-handed kind of work when she has the use of her one arm. So Mia was able to work with Rebecca to create this beautiful piece. 
and bring a bit of that sparkle back for Rebecca in an accessible way. Um, this spoon crown was actually my design and it's actually, again, a multifaceted work. For me, I wanted to have something that was about spoon theory. Um, and if you're not aware, spoon theory is, uh, is a thing in the disability community and I guess everywhere else where people have a finite amount of spoons every single day. And if you're a person with disability, you might use a lot more of your spoons to do the same task that someone without disability might use. So I use five spoons to have a shower, you use one spoon. But at the end of the day, we only have five spoons, so I'm exhausted. And the secondary meaning for this also is, it's a little funny joke in the autistic community, is that um, big spoons suck, generally. We are fans of the little spoon. Sorry, Tim, if you're watching, he told us earlier that he was a big spoon fan. We don't see Tim, you'll know why. <laughs> so Mia also actually made these works into a video work as well. And you'll see in a little bit that Virginia is one of the other artists that she collaborated with to make this work. So Virginia was an artist who um, has, there she is, throughout her life has done dancing across the world in different facets and was a ballet dancer. Um, but she never had a tutu, ever. So now she has a tutu in her 60s and I think you can tell that she was pretty stoked about it. Um, and I can't watch this video myself because a lot of the times I thought that this was going on the cutting room floor and you have me flashing people in the video. I have a skirt underneath, but that's all good. But the work <laughs> is called Silly Season and it yeah. really lives up to that name. And one of the really poignant things about this entire piece together is that for Mia, this is actually one of her first happy works. Um, Mia's made a lot of work about her traumas, about different hard things in her life that she's gone through in her lived experience. But this piece, in all of its wonderful silliness, is just about pure disabled joy, which is really special because it's about bliss and joy in your disability, not despite it. Hmm. Are you happy to talk about Rebecca's work? Yep. Yeah. So, again, we'll give you for scale here. I'm, I don't know how tall I am. Average woman size tall and other genders too. These works were made by Rebecca as a collaboration between three different artists, Virginia Bucknell, myself, Ebony Whiteman, and Jane Thatcher. This video work in the middle um, is a wonderful piece where Rebecca actually got Jane to outline her body for her in a performance piece. Now, Jane um, speaks again with very few words, oftentimes, but the connection between these two was very, very apparent. And as both of them living with acquired brain injuries, their connection is something that most people cannot understand. Um, and Jane was able to do this from her wheelchair and she did a brilliant job. And I, I think if you get a chance, please watch um, Rebecca's video artist statement and Jane's video artist statement on our Instagram as well. Um, and over here, sorry, we have Virginia's collaboration. So this was Virginia um, and Rebecca drew the outline of her. And I think there's something interesting we were talking about today is that Virginia, again, struggles oftentimes with mental health. And she's either like going, 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 or she's, you know, down. And she got her on a going, going day. <laughs> definitely tell because this is party um, and I just think it's brilliant that she was managing to capture that on that day. This piece is myself and Rebecca um, and Rebecca wanted to have 
this um, piece down because she wanted to be able to spoon me. I don't know if that's against any OH&S regulations, but it was all okay for me. Um, we did this together and it was quite a cathartic experience. Um, Rebecca drew me and I drew Rebecca. And Rebecca has spasticity in her arm and her leg. So you can actually see here the movement where her arm has started to move throughout the time. She has, when she uses a cane, a more visible disability. However, mine is internal. So Rebecca was actually getting me to think about myself, think about my feelings and how I felt in my body during this time, and draw it where I was feeling tension, in my hips, in my lungs, in my head. And as an autistic person, I often struggle with that. So getting that done was quite cathartic. Hmm. Maybe take a little break and go have a sip of water. And then we'll come over and take a look at Kiri's next work. Yeah. Do you want to just set the camera down so we can go get a little drink of water? Yeah, sure. Oops. I'm just going to take you around Kiri Smith's work. Torn, taut, tethered. So we have a couple of components to this work, including these alcohol ink paintings that are framed and they feature some designs within boxes, particularly symbols. Um, and these are family trees. The symbols represent different disabilities and experiences that are shared within families. And Kiri, through this work and talking about these shared experiences within family came to a place of going from, you know, thinking that handing down or the sharing of disability through family being a negative thing um, to actually something that was really positive and that she could celebrate in this work. Her thinking turned from, you know, is this something that I have cursed my children with? to going to a different way of thinking about it, in that um, we're the best people to share this together. Um, these are shared experiences that, that actually are part of our connection. And here we have um, a curtain, veil-like element to this work, which is in reference to Kiri's beloved domestic environment, um, reminding her of the curtains from her grandmother's home. To talk to this way. Yep. So this piece, Torn, Taught, Tethered, is from Pier, uh, Kiri. And it's about um, Madonna and child uh, and how Jesus' mother felt knowing that her son was coming into the world to be crucified. And that's essentially one of the traumas that Kiri had to work through, knowing that even though she loves her children and she's will give them all that they need, that the world isn't catering for people with disability. And um, that was where she started from. And these two birds actually represent her two children. But throughout the experience, she came to a place of acceptance where she felt like she was actually the right. person. Um, can you still hear me, Leanne? Okay, it's still rolling. That's good. Um, we just mightn't have some moderation on the comments, so keep it PG, people. <laughs> so Kiri actually has put in some of her medical information and reports from her and her children as well, which are redacted because she felt like she wanted to tear them up because they don't actually represent her. They don't represent her experience and she's not confined to the reports and the pathology of people with disability in our society. And this is Kiri's first work in the gallery as well. So, you know, thumbs up to Kiri. She did a brilliant job.
so yeah. and I'll go into gallery two. So just another thing to add about these three different maps. So one is from Kiri and her family, another is Mia's family, and the third one is Ebony's. So as people with neurodiversity within their family experience came together to create these beautiful symbolic family trees that celebrated those experiences within their family. So here in Gallery 2, we've got some other works. This is Virginia Bucknell's work, The Sea of Life. And Ebony talked about Virginia before, who is a dancer and has had dance as a part of her life through, um, throughout her experiences. Virginia has been creating these beautiful paintings that reference nature and emotion. The ocean and the sea being uh, deeply important for Virginia as a place of peace and comfort. Uh, and natural lines and colours and shapes have been coming into her paintings. But here, within these um, organic uh, flowing lines, are fellow We Are Studios artists, including Virginia herself, who Virginia choreographed and posed into this tableau and then painted over the top of it and enhanced the different elements. So we've got Joseph. Mia, Robin and Virginia, Taylor down here, Rebecca over here, and then our beautiful friend who I'm just having a mental blank on at the moment. Taylor and Adrian. And Adrian, thank you, thank you. Sorry, I'm starting to lose a little bit of my brain capacity after lots of talking. So it was really also lovely as well. Adrian, who had worked so lovingly with Grazia on her painting, was also included in this tableau as well. We've got Timothy W. Martin's work here. Uh, we all hide from this below. And this almost monochromatic painting is a depiction of Tim's depression and the way that it can be all-consuming within his life. Like we were talking about before, this exhibition talks about different stories and experiences from the most beautiful but also to the most challenging in our lives as well. Tim has a fascination with uh, churches and cemeteries. They often feature in his landscapes, these evocative landscapes, that are actually representative of emotional states and um, experiences within his life. And here we have this very almost demonic um, Mr. Lowe character here, which is an embodiment um, of Tim's depression and its destructive nature that it has within his life. But in the corner here, we also have, try not to get my shadow in there, but the different facets of Tim and his personality is and Tim paints with the tiniest of paintbrushes. So this work is so detailed and beautiful. Mm. And it was really interesting too at our opening, a lot of um, men in particular, people who were tag alongs to the exhibition, really felt like this work spoke to them. Um, and that was quite significant. People who you wouldn't you normally find in an art gallery really connected with this piece. Also within um, the exhibition are eight tiny little artworks that are hidden throughout the space. These are tiny little portraits that Tim has done uh, about his fellow artists. He hasn't done everyone, but, um, but one of them includes um, a, a, a kind of amalgamated portrait of Ebony and Jordan um, because of their close relationship. It's our demon love child. <laughs> it's very scary business. So I'm just gonna tell you where one is, and then if you come in here, you'll have to find the rest. So this one down here is a uh, reference to Grazia, who um, come down here, you can see it's a little plate and knife and fork. So a reference back to Grazia's work that um, talks about the love of the domestic. And while we're here? We've got a Robin King's work, Princess Pearls and Precious Stones. So we have this lovely collection on almost like family of 
delicately beaded together bracelets. And Robin has um, lovingly collected these beads, including, including um, precious stones like lapis lazuli. And she collected these during the pandemic and found herself bringing this mindful beadwork into her, um, into her artist practice. Then you've got, we've got this painting here as well of a princess. And Robin is a painter. She also makes work that is tactile. She wants people to be able to touch her work. Um, but so this process and, and in kind of embracing these bracelets, that's something that she's been doing as a practice and actually thinking about them as artworks as well. Each of them holds a personality and there is um, a particular bracelet in here that she's created for Camilla. Camilla Parker Bowles, um, the uh, partner of the current king of England, and she's symbolically used the colours that you we see on the British flag: the red, the blue, and the white, with these large pearls here. So, Camilla, if you're watching, um, <laughs> Come Robin's, and pick it up. Robin's got a brand collaboration ready and waiting for you. Over here we've got um, some of our other statements um, in video form, which you can watch from the Black Town So, Instagram is this form. Finally over here we have um, another collaborative work by Marie McVenter, and this work is called Mr. Business Frogs Collaboration. Maria loves using recycled materials because, particularly cardboard, because it takes the pressure off the art making. So working with non-precious materials actually gives, you know, freedom of expression, not having to worry about, you know, the quality of the marks that you're making and, and like making the most of expensive art materials. So Maria has, um, painted this flat and then asked her fellow artists and also artist community, including Adrian and Sally, Jane's sister, uh, to come and paint a, a motive or a symbol that is important to them. So we have these different um, images around, some of them that you might recognise or even stylistically associate with different artists. We've got Tim's ghostly figure here, Grazia's little pizza box and one of her um, cats. And Jane's at the bottom there. Mm, Jane's beautiful meditative shapes here. And this is a work that is going to continue to grow and that Maria will continue to invite her fellow artists and community to act to as well. Mm. Within this space as well, we've had the um, drop-in makers. Um, so I think we'll actually just go to the Q&A now yeah. if there's anybody that has any questions, um, put them below. <laughs> so Liam, you can tell us about that one. Just sit on the bed. Yeah. So if anybody has any questions about the exhibition, now is your time with our Auslan interpreter before the lovely Leanne has to go. <laughs> one question? Yep. Uh, question is, uh, hi everyone, Jordan, content moderator here. Uh, the first question we had is what's next for We Are Studios? Mm. Good question. We are currently looking for a permanent space uh, for our studios. But in the meantime, we gather wherever we can, including visiting galleries and cultural spaces around Sydney every Friday as our Connect program. It's a great way for our artists to hang out together, look at great art, talk about art and culture, um, and you know, be part of the rich cultural fabric of, of our greater Sydney. We have a couple of other exhibitions coming up next year. Uh, that um, will happen around Western Sydney. And we also have our Elevate program, which is a 16-week program for emerging artists 
to develop their artist practice um, through collaboration. And there's also a question here from Misty3388. Um, have you enjoyed your first experience at, at BSC? What was the best slash most challenging part of exhibiting your work? Mm -hmm. um, my, my answer to that would be making this bed in three days. <laughs> um, because I got sick towards the end of it. And as you can kind of tell, I did a lot of collaboration with other people as well. But I think it turned out pretty good for a three-day um, mammoth effort. But I think one of the biggest struggles was space, honestly. Um, it turned out that um, one workshop space, which was generous, uh, you know, we, we weren't exactly the goldfish fitting the bowl. We, we were outgrowing the bowl. And so luckily, there were other spaces here at Black Arts that we could utilise on other days to um, do the, you know, the yeah. performative works like Mia's um, theatrical work and Rebecca's um, performance with Jane. So th I think really what we're saying is our, our artists had lots of big ideas and uh, we needed a big space, but we made it happen. And thanks to Blacktown Arts and Blacktown City Council, that was able to happen. Um, what inspired the name of the exhibition? So We Are is in reference to actually the name of our organization. So if you see here, our logo there, next to We Are is a little text box. And that's empty because we want to provide artists with disability the space and place to decide their own destiny, to decide who and what they want to be. So we are whatever you want to be. And we are all of this. We just want to check in um, with our wonderful supportive Auslan interpreter. We might have a few more questions and just making sure we've got capacity to just be on for a few more minutes. Good. Thumbs up. Okay. Thank you, Leanne. Excellent. Thank you, Leanne. <laughs> um, are there any other questions that anyone has? Uh, I don't think so. Um, Just a massive thanks from Jeremy Payne. They said, especially thank you, especially for people who can't make it there in person. Thank you, artists. The rich words speak such a universal language of collaboration authenticity and thank you for sharing your world with us yes thanks ebony leanne and liam ah uh, that's a really lovely message thanks guys thank you very much I'd and before we go as well i think i'd also like to say a big thank you to uh mr liam benson himself who has been doing the tour with us here today he's not feeling a hundred percent but he has been a trooper and you know we appreciate it um Everyone knows how significant these things and the hard work they take to make them happen. Thank you so much, Ebony. And really, I'm matching the energy of the artists that I work with and collaborate with and support. Uh, I can't even express to you the extent of additional hours that Ebony and Jordan have also worked on this project throughout the 10 weeks, before the 10 weeks, throughout the exhibition. Uh, it has been such a massive collaborative uh, projects that um, everyone has contributed to in such generous ways. One so more question. One more question. Just Speak asking up. what's next on the plan for We Are Studios. I think we've, we answered yeah, that one. Answered that that one. one. Yeah. yeah. So it's a space, an exhibition. But I might also take the opportunity to say, please do reach out if you're an with disability in Western Sydney who thinks you can be part of this. Mm. Um, you can reach us on social media or at our email address executive at wearestudios.org, which I'll drop in all the chats. Mm. Or go to, yeah, go to our website and um, connect with us and follow us. Also, connect with us on social media as well. Like we said, that this is a place for artists to make art, but it's also crucially a social space and a sense of belonging that has been nurtured by the artists that make up this community. I think it's one of the most inherent qualities of uh, this group of artists and community that I really appreciate. Um, it's a space where people don't have to explain anything and there, there's an almost an inherent sense of empathy and understanding within this community.
And I'd just like to say as well, on Saturday, we have artist talks happening at one o'clock. So if you are available, that's the last day of the We Are exhibition. So get down to Blacktown Arts at the Leo Kelly Blacktown Arts Centre and see this before we roll on out. Um, and thank you all for watching today. We really appreciate it. And thank you to Leanne for doing our Oslo interpretation. Thank you to all the staff who have allowed us to be in here today. And thank you to the artists. You guys are brilliant. Um, we love you. And oh, if you have lots of money, give us some. <laughs> or, or space, whatever, we'll take anything. We are really grateful for all the generous support that everyone's been giving us and it really has allowed our artists to thrive. But you've really seen today in our debut exhibition we are. So looking forward to seeing you on our next live tour of our next exhibition um, in the following year. Okay. Bye Thanks everyone. Everybody. Bye. Hi, Leanne. Can you hear us? Hi, yeah. Hi, yeah. I'm on it. I'm on it. Oh, no. Here I am. Hello. Hi. Thank you very much for your support. You're so very welcome. Thank you. Well, we hope that, yes, it wasn't too stressful for you. Thank you for no. taking it in your stride. No problem at all. Um, and so with billing, we just get sent, um, obviously, I think, an invoice. Yeah. Uh, Any time I'll send, we'll send you an invoice and do top course, and then um, they will pay me. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I hope you have a really lovely rest of your day. You too. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.